In this video, I'm going to talk about seat upholstery on the 991. These seats have come from a 981, but they're all 991 parts. Um, so they're all uh, pretty much exactly the same. The variations that you'll see will be based on the type of seat that you spec. This is the two-way Sports Plus seat in full leather. Um, I've got another car there with the 14-way Sports seats. And most of it is pretty much the same. Uh, but there are a few things that are a little bit different. But what I'm going to go through here is the basic structure of the way these things are put together. So if, for some reason, you want to have a bit of a crack at doing this, then you can go ahead and do so. Sewing these seats isn't just a general DIY task. Uh, you'll need to have some experience with uh, sewing. You'll need a machine that looks something like that, which is a walking foot. That one's a, a triple feed machine which is able to deal with uh, the coarse thread and the materials that you can go through because you have to sew through plastic and that sort of stuff uh, to make these things work. Uh, but if you've got all those skills, or I might just give you a bit of an idea of what's involved, uh, then keep listening. And so what I'll go through is the three different covers, how they're constructed, and just some general information. This isn't going to be a full DIY on how to do it because that is way beyond the scope of this video. But for someone who has some skills, at least this will give you a bit of an idea of what's involved. So there are three cushions. There's the centre one here. It's the, uh, the surround for the, the seat back and the, the seat itself. The reason I'm sewing some new panels into these is because these got really wet. This is the project car. That isn't going to go back onto the road, but at least I needed some seats that didn't have holes all through them. These got really wet, and when it happen when that happens, the the leather shrinks when it dries out. You can see here that seam there would normally be way around the other side. Here's that whole thing has shrunk. It's just pulled apart the felt and everything at the back there. Uh, and also, it just turns your leather into cardboard. That's the panel that I've just pulled out of there. The other one. I had to replace that piece, that piece there, as well as the one over the top, because that had just completely fallen a bit. So I'll show you pictures of that uh, in a moment, how it's turned out. I'm not using leather, because again, uh, this car isn't going to go back on the road. It just needs to have seats that just don't look terrible. So I've just used faux leather, uh, and it hasn't turned out so bad on the other one. But enough said that if your seats get wet, dry them out, keep them in good condition, because these things compared to fresh leather, right, that's like cardboard and it just tears apart really, really easily. Uh, some basic information about the whole thing and how it's put together. Uh, all of the seams on these are eight millimeters. And you can see here there are notches on these. They align with notches on the other panels there. So when you're sewing them together, all you need to do is line those up and then just sew and everything just gets put in the right spot. I can only assume that these are machine cut in the factory, so they are extremely accurate. And then all you need to do is set up a guide on your machine, so it's eight millimeters away, how to do all this stuff. There are loads of videos on YouTube that you can have a look at of how to upholster. They just basically put a guide next to the, the foot of the machine, which is gonna sew a certain distance away. The, for example, the BMW uh, old E36 that I just fully reupholstered, it took a 10 mil seam. These are an eight everywhere. Uh, but there's notches everywhere, you line the notches up and off you go. The thing that makes the seats a little bit difficult, uh, and mainly if you just wanted to make some from scratch, obviously you have to get the, the patterns uh, and you'll get those off the old ones if they're not completely trashed, or you can do it from the seat cushions. But the plastic strips, these seem to be bespoke plastic strips because these are the things that clip everything into the seat itself. They make it really easy to put together, but it makes it pretty difficult to replicate if you don't have these. So you're probably gonna to have to pull these old ones off and use those again. So for example, this one here, which is the one that clips in, that clips on the inside, uh, that is a sort of a V-shaped barb, which is embedded into this piece of cloth, and then that is sewn on. But the nice thing about all of these is the way they're put together is that you sew them, um, when you, you can see the, like the, notches here line up with markings where it is in the factory. If you are sewing this, you can sew it like that on the machine. The foot, the right hand foot of a standard walking foot sewing machine just rests against the side there. You line up the inside of the fabric there and just run it along and it just puts it all in exactly the right spot. Uh, the outside one here, and there are lots of different profiles of these strips. 
Uh, this is the one that runs around the edge of the, the two-way Sports Plus seat. And the nice thing about when you're actually sewing this on is you're gonna have the fabric side up, the notches here in the fabric, there'll be corresponding lines on the, the plastic all the way around. So it gets all gets put in the right spot because this is all one piece. It's not like a big strip they cut off. It's one piece with a specific shape which ends right at the end there. Uh, but then all of these, it's a bit hard to see, but in the middle just there on the edge of the seam there is a line that's part of the plastic. So the way you do it is you line up the edge of the material with the line and then you put the foot of the, the machine against the edge of this barb here, which is the thing that clips into the seat. And then you just sew all the way along, all the way around, and it just puts it in the right spot. And as long as you just line up all the lines with the notches all the way around, it, you know, it sews in really nicely. And that's pretty much the, the concept by the way most of the the plastic strips are put on for the for the seat it's pretty much exactly the same thing it's a different profile compared to the other one but the concept is exactly the same it's a bit hard to see but again there is a line in the plastic there which is the thing that you'll line up the edge of the material the foot goes hard against the uh, the edge there then you just and run it along and it just puts it in the right spot again notches on here with markings just line it up to put it in the right spot Here's a bit of a close-up of when you're sewing and what the concept for all these strips is. So you can see the right-hand side of the foot here runs along the edge of the barb here. It's a bit hard to see, but there's a line in the plastic that runs along here, which is where the fabric or the leather is all lined up with. And as you can see, then with that foot just being there, then the needle just lines up with the thread. And that's pretty simple, just to put that in a very accurate position for all of the plastic strips. The seat... Uh, center it just has plain plastic strips on the bottom here so all you do is with the correct shape of that felt there all you do is just put that over the top line those up and just sew it down and that just puts it in the right spot so again that's pretty simple at the bottom here similar sort of profile to the others it's again a little bit different this one's doubled over just to hold everything nicely you do that as the second part of it but again you on this side here, this one here actually just lines up with the, the edge there and you just run along with the, the foot of the machine and it just puts it into the right spot. Uh, for those who have a machine like this or have used one before, you'll understand what I'm talking about here, but I changed over the, the motor type. Uh, the old style, which is what most industrial ones use, use they use a big uh, induction motor with a clutch which is really, really sensitive to actually control the speed. I changed it over to uh, this servo motor, which I just bought off eBay. It was pretty cheap. And to be honest, it's a, just a game changer. It completely changes how accurately you can sew because you can control the speed so easily. So, for example, in this one here, I even changed it over to a smaller pulley to even slow it down again. But I can change the speed, like the start speed, to like about 60 stitches a minute. So it's just going dunk, dunk. Donk, so it's really, really easy to control. And then the top speed, you can set up to like 4,000 or something crazy. Um, so it is a really, really good investment if you're going to do this sort of work. So to give you an idea of how easy speed control is, this is set up to a start speed of 100, but with that smaller pulley, it's probably about 60 or so. And with a top speed of 200, so if I just start, there you go, and that's just as easy as pie. To try and achieve that with a clutch machine is really, really difficult. And now, that's full tilt. Now if I want to go and change that, so I change the speed, I'll change that up to a thousand. So the start speed is still the same. There we go. Now if I go full tilt, off she goes. So, a complete game changer. I'd absolutely recommend it. So this piece here is made up of one, two, three, Four parts is one, two, three pieces of leather. This looks like a piece of Alcantara, which is the bit that folds underneath here. And I think they have the Alcantara there so it doesn't squeak. As well as on the other side, you've got that piece there, which is gonna go over the top here, as well as this long strip that runs around the edge. Uh, this piece here is like a big boomerang shape. So I made it as two parts, just along uh, with a seam along the top there, and that worked perfectly okay. 
Most of this is relatively simple, except for getting this nice curved shape at the top here. Whilst you can obviously make the curve, what we want it to do is go all the way around the other side to about here. This one's obviously shrunk. That seam would be normally about back there somewhere. And the problem is that as soon as you try and fold that flat uh, material around the back, all it wants to do is bunch it all up and it looks really, really terrible. And the problem is that's the first thing you see when you look at the seat is the top of that. If that looks terrible, it's gonna look uh, pretty dreadful. So I tried a whole bunch of things and this is what I eventually found that worked for me. So this is an old practice one, uh, just using some, uh, it's, it's funny, it looks like leather, but it's just faux leather that was cheap, so I just used it. But what I did was once I, and I'd only just cut out that first bit, I didn't worry about sewing any of this, so I get this shape correct first, is I started off with the stitch as close to the edge as I possibly could here, and I went back and forth, and then I run a stitch around here with a fairly long stitch, so probably about a six mil stitch, all the way around to the corner here, and then when I pull it out of the machine, it'll use a leave a really big long thread back here, so I can wrap my finger around that and pull on it later on, do the same from the center, all the way out to the other side. And then what I did was I just grabbed hold of that thread and just pulled it as I pushed up on this and that allows this to bunch up. And as it actually pulls it through, it'll bunch it up and then you can work it away around and make it exactly the shape that you want. Uh, and then what I did was I made a blank, which is basically a simulation of that, routed around the edge here. So it's pretty much an identical shape to it. And then what I did was I Put that in there like that and I actually clamped another piece of material to that here and this would all be bunched up and around the, the back here and obviously this wouldn't be connected to it. Uh, this will all be bunched up and looking pretty terrible. Then with it like that then you can use a heat gun and just some gentle heat and heat works really nicely to then just gently heat it. Practice with some uh, scraps before you go so you know how hot things can get before you start to damage things. And then we're just gonna gently smooth that over and eventually it will change its shape. So it's this nice smooth shape. Uh, and then once you've got that, that's the probably the hardest bit of it. Then what I did was I just got some strips of material and I glued it. This should be right along the edge again. This was just a bit of a practice run. So I put that right along the edge there, put it back on my blank here, smooth everything over. And once I was happy with that shape, then I went ahead and sewed the pieces all together. Down the bottom here, it's a similar sort of thing. So that's in that shape there. So that curls around there nicely and just doesn't bunch up out here. Doesn't need to be as nice as the one at the top because it's sort of hidden down the bottom here. So you can sort of get away with it. But it's a similar sort of thing where I just sewed around the corner here, big long thread out, pulled it through, worked my way around. So it's really even little bunches up, bit of heat, I actually found something that, the, that was this really nice curved shape uh, and then a bit of heat and then just rolled it over with my hands and you end up with that nice uh, shape which is what you want so it doesn't bunch up and look terrible. So construction of the uh, seat back outer. Uh, before I start, whilst it looks pretty complicated, there are a number of pieces that are very accurately cut. Uh, stitching them together is not that hard. You don't need a special machine, a bog standard machine like I've got uh, is going to be sufficient. So the way it all fits together, um, there's these pieces on the outside here. So the first thing they're going to do is to achieve that is we're going to sew this piece to this piece. This is double stitched and like as you would expect there is a piece of material on the underside there. So the way that works is those two bits of material, they're sewn together at my knuckles and then they fold them back and then they put another stitch along the sides here with a piece of material underneath, which is the thing that gives it extra strength because this bit here on the bolster is the thing that takes a fair bit of hit. So they want that double stitched. So they'll sew that bit to that bit there. And then this small piece at the bottom here, which is the bit that folds underneath uh, and keeps it out of the way. And once that is done, and that double stitch there is pretty simple. Like, um, and also the, the stitches here, they're all five mil stitches. So uh, you just have to set up your machine for that. And then once those are achieved, then it's gonna add that and that, because it's one big long strip that goes along the top to that. Uh, and then you'll have that 
sewn to that and it's got plain seams all in here which is all pretty simple and then you stitch along here all the way around so that is and I've seen a bunch of different names and that whether it's a lap seam or a welt seam but basically what it's going to do is it stitches one which is like a simple plain seam like that and then they get both pieces and they fold them over and they sew it again but they do that on this side and the reason they do that it makes a very strong seam because this piece of material here is underneath this one here and then sewn to it uh, and with a nice slow speed on your machine and just using the foot as a guide some special machines will have another little guide that sort of pokes into the corner here but you can do it pretty accurately and make it look pretty good without that uh, you just run around here making sure that as you go that is folded underneath correctly so it sews in correctly and the nice thing about doing that is that firstly it makes it stronger but also it stops it bunching up because if this seam underneath here you can see this is all nice and flat then it's going to sit flat against the cushion not really look really ugly if that's all bunched up and it's not sewn correctly it's going to look pretty ter terrible and sort of bunchy out here so once that piece there is sewn to those three pieces in the middle there then you can go ahead and sew this piece here which runs all the way down there uh, and then that plastic bit gets sewn into that and then finally the strip around the outside gets put on there are also a couple of little strips of plastic at the bottom there as well that need to be sewn on but overall it's not a particularly difficult seat to sew it's more about the accuracy of the pieces that you have to start off with that are going to make the big difference. Uh, in addition to that, the different, it's not all exactly the same pieces of leather, even though it looks the same on the outside. Here on the bolsters, it's reasonably well padded. There's where most of the foam on these is maybe a millimeter thick with a scrim on the outside. This is maybe a little bit thicker, this stuff, so that panel there. Uh, these ones all around the outside, that's relatively thin foam. Uh, this one here has sort of got a cotton, what looks like a cotton wadding, which is sewn and glued. Uh, I think there's also foam underneath that over the top. Um, and these three pieces here are bare leather. You can see just the, there's a little patch on the back for the emblem. Uh, but they're just bare leather. With these seams in here, they're just a, a plain seam, but once they're sewn, you can see the the 8 mil seam there, then they chop it off so it's relatively close, uh, so it doesn't really sit, especially the ones up here, so it doesn't really stick out and it sits nice and flat against the cushion. In the, the foam itself, there is a little groove in there for that to sit, but they've cut that off there so that's nice and flat. And the same along here, that's probably you know a couple of mil at most. For the seat, uh, the way this is constructed, each of these four pieces are separate individual pieces. They are going to be sewn together as one to start off with. You're also going to sew and on the inside so it doesn't squeak against the center console. It's got this material here, whereas on the other side it's full leather, which is the bit that's visible. But you'll sew those pieces together. That will get double stitched like the, uh, the top cushion cover. Again, it has obviously a piece of material underneath here that helps it out. Uh, the double stitching here, when that's laid flat out, is pretty simple to do so that's not actually going to be particularly hard and then once that piece that piece and that piece are all uh, made then you can just sew them together on the underside here you'll have again eight mil seams here there's not just here that line everything up you've got the envelope for the wires on each of those each of those wires is slightly different because it opens out towards the towards the front so they are of different sizes uh, and then once you have sewn that together, um, then when you're joining the sides here, you're just going to put the envelope down the sides. It's also got these little hooks at the back here that the hooks in the wire will actually go through. Uh, and then you'll end up with that whole thing. And then you can go ahead and sew on that plastic strip around the end. That's the one with the funny profile. The one at the back is just a plain block of plastic. So it doesn't actually have a barb in it because it slots in there perfectly okay. So here is the passenger seat which had the most damage to it. I've completely sewn a new centre. Now I've replaced that panel, that panel and the one that runs over the top here. I've just used faux leather which 
is not even close to the really nice quality leather that's there, but hey, I mean, I just wanted to practice and make it look not as terrible as it was before, and it's turned out okay. Uh, like I said earlier, it's this shape here, which is really critical to get that right, uh, and that took me the most work, even though I thought the center one was gonna be the simplest thing. Down the bottom here, it's bunched up a little bit there, but really when you're uh, normally looking at it when you get in a car, you don't even notice that. It's this one here that's really, really important. If you're just going to change individual panels, something to be aware of is that where there is visible stitching like this, that starts to become problematic. Especially, for example, because I've had to replace this one over the top here, I've had to unstitch this whole thing, uh, as well as uh, all of this here, and what that means, when I'm sewing it back together again, I need to, and I haven't done a, a really good job of it, I need to align the first plain stitch, and then when I fold it over and do that, that second visible stitch, I need to align it. That's actually not too hard to line it up with the existing holes, but you also need to match the, the thread, which I haven't. This has got sort of a mid-gray thread, and I've just used black, because I don't really care. Uh, but looking at it closely, you go, ah, oh, that doesn't look like such a crash shot job. And having the thread accurately matched would be perfect. Uh, if you really wanted to do a crazy good job of it, then any of the existing holes, you would actually do it by hand, not actually by hand, but with the machine slowly just turning it by hand and matching by putting the needle through the existing holes, which would take a long time, but that would then do a much better job of it. When you fit the seat cover, well, probably what you'll find, especially if there are areas like this that really need to be stretched, because this is a funny shape and you've got a flat piece that's over the top of it, you'll see a few lumps and bumps in here. Just use your heat gun on a gentle heat, warm it up a little bit, and then just smooth it over, and pretty rapidly, it just sorts itself out and goes to a nice shape so it doesn't look uh, super ugly. basics of hog clipping, do them one wire at a time, generally the ones along here first and then the sides. So we're going to feed our wire in. Have it so it's pretty central. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from left to right because that's just going to make it a little bit easy with me being right handed have my clip already pre-loaded into the pliers so that's just sitting there ready to go and when I use these when I'm actually putting them in there I need to squeeze this reasonably hard not so hard that this compresses but enough to hold it in place as I sort of maneuver it down the bottom and then what I'm going to do is with everything lined up making sure the seams are lined up in the grooves here look down where that hot clip needs to go get my tool here my pick tool make a hole I'm just going to hold it there like that so the alignment of the holes doesn't go away. Put that through there. And now, as I squeeze, I'm going to put my hand in underneath, go in underneath the, the wire, and then I can squeeze from there. So I'm going to go and do all of those three, and then once they're all in, then I'm going to make sure that that wire is perfectly aligned centrally so I don't have it sticking out one or the other. And especially on the long ones, making sure that that's correct so it's not going to stick into the cloth top or bottom. The hog clips I'm using are these things. Now you could buy hog clips because this is a BMW seat. The BMW hog clips are frighteningly expensive, whereas this was 500 for 20 bucks or something. So enough to last many, many seats. Only problem is they have a blunt tip on the end rather than sharp. And the idea of the sharp ones, the OEM ones, is they just push straight through really easily and then you just hook them up. Whereas all I do, which works really, really well, is I use a pick tool like that, put the hole through it, and then whilst I'm holding it like that, just feed down the hog clip into it. It just goes down nicely into that hole, and then you clip it onto that wire underneath.